Hi everyone, it's Dr. T and I just wanted to share with you some ways that you can stop the blame game in your relationships. So we all know what that blame game is. We all know how frustrating that is and unproductive it is for people to be blaming us of things and we're blaming them about things and not a lot is accomplished in those moments. In fact, whatever's happened that somebody's blaming each other for, it typically became, uh, creates more damage. Not, it doesn't create more understanding and there's not a lot of benefit from that strategy. So one of the things to just notice that's really simple about what's going on is that in a culture where we are not trained to process emotions productively, let alone process them, process them at all, people don't have a lot of education and training around this. And so they're just doing whatever comes up inside them, reacting and selecting strategies that aren't really super emotionally conscious at the end of the day. So what can happen for somebody that does not quite know how to process their own emotions, see the situation thoroughly and clearly, understand where they're uh, co-creating the situation and make decisions about the outcomes they want to have happen, then they can just feel overwhelmed by the emotions that they feel. And blame is one of the quickest resources and strategies to initiate onto somebody because it starts to get what one can't process off of them and onto you. So the blaming process that is not very productive is di very different than saying, this is the experience that I'm having. This is what I'm noticing. Here's what I want to do about it. It's very different when people just start blaming and putting people at fault and accusing and melting down. And a lot of that is because they're just not able to process their own emotions about a situation and, and calmly and clearly think it through, take a look at it and make decisions accordingly. All right. So that part of the blame game does not work. So whether it's any of us doing it or somebody that you know and you're in a relationship with, just recognize that anybody that is kind of going straight to blame or staying in blame, which is really easy to do, and we do it without really realizing what's going on, that has so much to do with you know any one of us just not having the capacity or growing the capacity to really think through the experience and make very conscious decisions about high, uh, make very conscious decisions about what they want to do. Hi Tiki, very nice to have you here. So the other part of it is that when somebody's putting the blame on you, what happens is that we typically don't recognize what's really going on emotionally. Well, we may realize like somebody's trying to put the blame on us, we might also at the same time really get lost in the situation by taking the bait, right? Somebody's blaming us. We get all triggered. Oh, hi, Jess. You're so welcome. So we get all triggered by like somebody blaming us because we're taking it at face value rather than taking it at like, oh, somebody's really struggling in the pain of what they're experiencing. And they're just doing like their natural strategy of, trying to push it off, right? Just trying to push it off. It just, you know, people can do this with the person in front of them. They can do it like, ah, oh, if the weather wouldn't have been this way, then everything would be different. If I hadn't have done this or so-and-so hadn't have called or whatever, it's just a natural thing for a culture of people that were never really trained in emotional processing, really productive, effective emotional processing it's a natural thing to do because it feels crummy. Whether we've done something, it feels crummy. If somebody's done something, yeah, we're just like in a, but we are right to keep, we're in a passive position there. And so if somebody else is doing the blame piece, we can be naturally just so triggered by that because 
first of all, it doesn't feel right because we're getting someone else's emotional stuff that really isn't ours and they're not processing it for themselves so we can have a productive experience. So first of all, we're getting that. We don't like the feeling of that very much. First of all, it just doesn't feel good to have all the emotions sent over to us. Second of all, second of all, um, we're easy to take the bait of that um, because the other person feels so clear that this is the problem that it becomes real to us. Like somebody's really thinking this about us and it's not, um, we then we then go into emotional pain about it. We want to send that pain back to them. And then we go round and round and it's, nobody's learning anything. It's not really productive. And all that's happening is that somebody just, each, each party in the situation is not just in a state of seeing like the emotional playing field or the emotional matrix that's going on and seeing it for what it is in that respect versus what the words are, what the situation and circumstances are. And that's how all of us at some point in time have ended up in, uh, you know, the types of conversations that feel like you're in that and it's not going anywhere and it's getting worse. Yeah. And it's a, it's a very vicious cycle that we just, then we get used to that cycle and still it's kind of confused about what's really going on right which is often that somebody's having an emotional experience they're not quite sure what to do with it they make it about something else or someone else because it's easier to do than really take full ownership of it and full um creative capacity to, of what to do with it like i'm going to problem solve through this i'm going to create something effective uh, and create something that is going to be productive. And then whoever might be getting the blame sent to them first, they're also, uh, they don't want to take that on. So they're not feeling like they want to process all of that. And uh, it feels wrong and it feels like, no, nope, I'm going to send you back this pain and I'm going to up level it so that you're feeling the pain and you stop putting it on me. But what happens is it just keeps escalating, <laughs> creating this big, huge ball of pain and definitely not productivity. So what we want to do differently so that we don't end up in conversations that are irrelevant about who's to blame about something rather than here's what I'm experiencing. Oh, well, here's what I'm experiencing. That's got a whole nother quality to it. It's taking ownership. I'm experiencing this not quite sure what to do with it. I noticed this, I noticed that, same thing, back and forth. Here's what I'm noticing. So one of the big things that we can do is just see the emotional, again, see the emotional uh, matrix of what's going on, what's happening for the other person as they're expressing these things. Is it really about these things or is it really about what's happening inside of them? Usually that's what it is. And then, oh, now I'm feeling something, what's happening inside of me and what do I want to do about it? Because I don't have to do what it is that's happening inside of me. I can have something happen inside of me, be aware of it and choose to do something that I really intend to do based on what I'm feeling and what I'm wanting. And that has a whole other quality to it. And the great news, everyone, is it just takes one person in the dynamic, whether it's a romantic relationship, domestic, you know, romantic partnership, or, um, you know, a coworker, a friend, a child, a, you know, an in-law, a cousin, whatever it is, it takes one person in the dynamic to really look at things for what's going on and be aware and be intentional and become effective in it. Even if the person continues to kind of struggle with that, you can keep coming back to that over and over and saying, you know, somebody can share with me that they think this is my issue, but you can also let them believe that if you want, and you can still choose to be super productive, not creating more damage, not adding to it, not damaging yourself, and really maneuvering through something in the best way that's going to get the best outcome for that moment and for the long term. So by 
being somebody that doesn't amp up the blame game, you're going to extinguish it in your life, in yourself, and you're going to extinguish your automated reactions to it. And you're going to have that nice space to say, okay, here's what's going on. Here's what I believe will be effective, you know, in m moving through the situation with somebody else that's struggling. So if I start struggling, then we're just going to be struggling together. So how can I be somebody that, you know, really concentrates on being effective in the situation and to produce something the best that I, best thing we could possibly can out of it. It's got a whole other quality and I really look forward to all of you uh, putting this into your life, integrating this in and, uh, you know, experiencing how this can be different and sharing with me what's going on as you're putting this in your life and what's, uh, what you're noticing is improving and anything else you're noticing that's benefiting the situation from what you learned today. All right, everyone, thanks for uh, tuning in and being so open to grow in these different ways. And as a reminder, you know, this is just one of literally hundreds of really highly effective emotional training techniques that we teach our clients. And if any of you are wanting to grow into your highest emotional capacity and your highest emotional strength and effectiveness, right? Going from being effective, affected to effective, um, you can do so by going to the drtsolution.com and reading about our emotional training program. In the meantime, I wish you all uh, a great uh, next few days of the week and I will see you soon. Take care.